You are listening to Leading the Factory Forward with your host, Lynn Friest. We share interviews with manufacturing experts and strategies for embracing the digital future, recruiting a new workforce, finding new business. Lynn is an advanced manufacturing strategist and leadership consultant who is on a mission to show manufacturing leaders how to improve their current operations while preparing for a digital future. And here's your host, Lynn Friest. Welcome to this episode of Leading the Factory Forward. This episode number is 56, and it's going to be a book report from a book called Leadership on the Line. And as always, our goal here is to help you create a compelling future for yourself, your teams, and your organization. And I always encourage you to visit my website at lynnfreas.com to download a summary at the bottom of the podcast episode. And then you can use that download as a tool to capture notes as you start your exploration into the concepts that we discuss. Or to help you get started on your journey and to stay up to date on new episodes, download the free worksheet, Three Steps You Need for a More Productive Workday. So on this episode, again, we're looking at the book, Leadership on the Line, and it's Staying Alive Through the Dangers of Change. That's by Ronald Heifetz and Marty Linsky. And this is a really interesting book about leadership. And why is it important? Because they don't have any fluff in this book, and it really talks about some of the, well, what they call the dangers of leadership their whole idea of staying alive. Well, leadership, especially when you're leading in uh, uncertain and difficult times, it is dangerous because you're asking people to move out of their comfort zone. You're asking them to move into an uncertain future. They're not always going to be thankful that you're doing that. They may be thankful that you helped them through it, but at the time, it can be kind of a challenge. So this book is really gets into the heart of some of these things of what's the dangers that you face as a leader and how do you work with those things? So the first part of it is the challenge, and it talks about what's the heart of danger, and then the second chapter is about the faces of danger. But I'll jump right into one of the key things they talk about here is understand that in these complex times, there are two kinds of challenges you face as a leader. There are technical challenges, and then there are complex challenges. Now, in one sense, the technical challenges, these are things we know how to solve. There are processes in place. We have the knowledge to do it. And it becomes more, a, I'll say, a management issue. You just have to organize the resources and people to do things that you and they already know how to do. And often there's a known outcome. You know that if you do these things, that's what's going to happen. But what we face today is what we'll call adaptive challenges. And those are different because, one, the problem may not even be readily identified. You just know things aren't working right. Or in the case of things like our pandemic, you don't know exactly what's coming next or what is the problem you're actually going to have to solve. It often also requires a broader view of things. These things have a lot of different factors. In today's world, we've got the economic factors with the pandemic. We've got the factors in involving yourself, your people, how they're affected by this, how suppliers are affected. So there's a multifaceted problem here, and it, quite frankly, is sometimes hard to define. And the other thing is, is that you as a leader probably won't be able to solve the problem. Possibly with the technical challenges, with your experience, you can say, hey, here's how we're going to solve this. But now when we have these more complex challenges, it's not so straightforward. You're going to have to not only work hard at it yourself, but you're going to have to work at it with your people because they probably are going to have elements of the solution. And then, again, the path is uncertain. So it's always not so much as we're going to define the solution to this problem and, and execute it. It's more like we're going to find our way through this messy process and we think we can figure it out, which we probably can, but it may not be easy nor quick. Now, in the book, they talk about some other areas that could hamper you as a leader or challenge you. Some of them is, you know, people in their just their natural response, wanting to stay in their comfort zones. They may do several of these things, or you may face them, I should say. Marginalization. You may be, oh, he's the expert or he's the one, but you know what? He doesn't know what he's talking about, so we don't really need to, you know, follow that what he's saying kind of a thing. People may divert. And a lot of that comes to, hey, let's solve this problem with the things we know how to do. Divert us from really tackling the tough challenges. And quite frankly, sometimes they're going to attack you. You know, why are you doing this to us? And so you're going to have to be able to respond as a leader. You may not be able to say we don't have to do it, but you may have to just be understanding that people are going to react in sort of a harsh mode to what you're trying to help them through. So in the book, then, they talk about what can be your response as a leader to these things? And they basically have five responses. And I'll go through each one individually, but they are get on the balcony, 
think politically, orchestrate the conflict, give the work back, and hold steady. So those are, at least in the book, those are possible responses that you have as a leader. The first one, get on the balcony. A lot of this is the analogy they're using is as opposed to being on the dance floor in the midst of the whirl and swirl of day-to-day activities, you have to be able as a leader to step back and step up to see the whole picture as best you can. Because often, again, when these issues are involving complex systems, you need to be able to step back from the urgent and the immediate and see what's the whole picture and maybe look as far ahead as is possible for you. And also from the balcony in that metaphor, you need to find out where your people are. There are some people that are ready to move ahead, some people that are reluctant, some people that really don't want to move ahead. So that's another piece of what you need to do. And along with that is thinking politically. I know in my experience with the change initiatives, I had to decide who are the people that were ready to change. And there might be, say, 20% of the people that are earlier adopters of a change. They're eager to start on something new. They recognize the problem. And you really need to engage with those early adopters to help them get the process started. And then obviously, there are going to be a lot of people who are maybe skeptical, but neutral. And again, those are the ones that you need to keep working with, but understand who they are. And then finally, they're going to be the people who are the critics and the people just don't want to move ahead. And again, understand who they are, but don't devote all your time to trying to convince those people. They may be the ones that are dragged kicking and screaming into the future. So just take the time to understand where your people are. Another piece that I thought was really interesting in this book, and here again, they're not dodging into nice little platitudes and stuff like that. They're saying you need as a leader to be able to orchestrate the conflict. And when they talk about that, there's a couple of things they suggest. One, you need to know when to turn the temperature up of the organization, not over inflate it, not turn it into a bonfire, but when you need to put more urgency into the organization. And conversely, when you find that people are overwhelmed, is there a way to moderate it and make smaller steps forward? Remind people of what's going to be good about the future, uh, those kinds of things. So it's an idea of how do you moderate the temperature of the organization? Then there's also a piece that goes along with moderating the temperature of the conflict. It's also give the work back to people. Often people want to say, as a leader, they're going to throw every problem and every issue over the wall to you to fix or solve, when in fact, because this is an adaptive problem, everybody's going to have to solve their piece of it. So you have to, as a leader, be conscious about saying, no, this is work you need to do. If it's difficult, I will help. But again, you need to have everybody working on this issue. It's not just going to be solved by you as the leader. You can't micromanage this thing. So, and again, there's going to be a delicate balance there where you don't want people to feel like they're left alone, they're on their own with no support, but you don't want to be hovering over them. And you want them to know that you're not going to hover over them. They're there to try to figure out what they need to do. You'll be there to help. Their colleagues in particular are there to help. So you really need to figure out what's that balance there between you don't want them to feel abandoned, but you don't want them to feel micromanaged. Then there's also an issue of what they call holding steady. And some of that comes about is this is going to take persistence and patience as well as innovation and energy. So sometimes you have to keep people moving one step at a time, recognizing that it's not going to be done today. It's not going to be done tomorrow. It won't be forever, but we have to solve this problem one day at a time. Another thing is you sometimes have to let some of these issues ripen. So there may be a particularly sticky problem. People want to jump to a solution. You may need to, again, just say, let's keep an eye on this. Here's what we'll do today. But, you know, we need to revisit because that particular problem may look different tomorrow. Again, I mean, this is happening every day in terms of the pandemic. The right thing today may not have been the right thing that we knew about a few weeks ago. So, again, issues as you go through change. And this could be in your digital transformation. There are going to be pieces of this that are straightforward, but as it interacts in complex ways, you're going to have to solve brand new problems. And quite frankly, the answer may be different as you gain more knowledge about what you're needed in your digital transformation. Another interesting piece in this conclusion of their book is managing yourself. Now, they have an interesting term called managing your hungers, but it's the things that you need as a leader and actually the people working with you need too. But it's the idea of you may want acceptance, you may want approval, but that may prevent you from helping 
move the process ahead. So you have to kind of, again, manage how much approval do I need during this difficult time? And can I move ahead even if I don't have a lot of positive feedback being given to me? And I mentioned earlier, you know, you're now a leader and not as much a manager. You have to give up some more control. So can you be okay with that? Knowing that, again, we're in a busy, messy middle for this particular issue. People will make mistakes. So how do we solve them? Another thing, whether it be for you or the people you work with, is the tendency and sometimes is to judge people and not look at the problem. And again, so that as a leader, that's something you got to, one, for yourself, stay focused on the issue and not on the people, or at least as far as judging them. Give them constructive feedback. But there's been mistakes made. There will be mistakes made, whether it be by you as a leader or by the teammates you're working with. And, you know, within your teams, you have to manage that, too. Again, keep people focused on the issues and not on the personalities or the judgment type piece. So then kind of in summary, reviewing what some of the key points we talked about earlier are, the challenge for you as a leader in these uncertain times is these are not necessarily what authors define as technical problems that have known solutions and known ways to solve them, but they're adaptive problems where the problem may be ill-defined, how to solve it is not yet defined, and the fact that any solutions may occur over time and you won't be able to walk a straight linear path to any solution. The second thing they talked about is the responses that you make as a leader. The idea of getting on the balcony, stepping above the swirl of activity so that you can see that big picture. Thinking politically or understanding where people are, whether it be the people on your teams, your colleagues, your peers, others in the factory, could even be suppliers and bankers. Find out where other people are on this issue so at least you understand that. You won't necessarily change anyone's mind, but you'll understand where they're coming from. Orchestrate the conflict. Understand when it's time to push ahead, but as well, when is it we can ease up a little bit? We can't provide certainty, but we can work on clarity with people. So it's not always about pushing ahead. Sometimes we have to reflect on, okay, what's happened? Maybe even reflecting on, here's how far we've come. We, you know, we've already figured out some of this stuff. We have a ways to go, but we've been successful at figuring out things so far. Then giving the work back. Again, while the heroic leader is a common phrase and common attitude for leaders, that's not what this may be about. This may require the skills, talents, and creativity of everybody in your organization. And then finally, hold steady. Again, patience, commitment, and just keeping at it. One step every day kind of a thing. That idea of this is kind of like the agile thing with sprints, but I don't like to use the term sprints because it's more of a let's get in the routine of talking every day about what we're going to do today to try to solve today's problems as well as looking forward to solve the whole problem. So then finally, some thoughts for you as a leader. I would say a lot of this, you need to manage your why. Why am I doing this? Am I doing it because I want to be the hero? Well, as I mentioned earlier, that may be a problem. Am I genuinely concerned about the people and helping them? Again, you want to help them succeed in a new organization. So while you have to be helping people, you have to also be helping people change. So I would say as a leader, it's one of those things where you have to have patience with the difficult conversations. Am I willing to think about and have difficult conversations? Again, this is not about judging people but helping people understand what's needed, what needs to be done next, and what's their role in the whole thing. So, you know, as I said, for you as a leader, think about those things. It's not just about me as a leader. I need to have people on board. I really need to be listening as well as acting and providing direction. So those are the kinds of things I I would encourage you to look and think about as a leader. So finally, what's up next? Well, we're going to continue a mix of solo episodes and interviews with experts in manufacturing and other areas of business that will help you possibly build your business. So in the last episode of each month, I'll be sharing my thoughts and ideas on becoming a silver entrepreneur or how silver talent might be able to help you in your business. And in our very next episode, we're going to be talking with Brian Buckley. He has a book out called The Elite Road Warrior. So it's how to manage yourself and your energy and your success as you travel, which right now may be very little for some people. But I think the concepts in here are pretty useful just in our everyday lives. It's not only how you do it on the road, but how do you do it at home or in the workplace? So I look forward to our conversation with Brian. And then finally, I once again encourage you to visit my website, lynnfreas.com, download the PDF at the bottom of every episode, 
And to stay up to date on new episodes, you can download the free worksheet, Three Steps You Need for a More Productive Workday. Again, thanks for listening, and we'll talk soon.